to peasinabucket.com and I'm here with the new edition of 4x6 Photo Love. It's the 10th month of the year so that means we're going to scrapbook 10 4x6 photos and this month we're going to give divided page protectors a try. These page protectors come from American Crafts and they're available here at 2 Peas and they include spaces for 5 4x6 photos on each side so we have a 10 all together and that's 6 in the landscape and 4 in the portrait. Then for this month we're going to try something new. We're going to add the embellishment on top of the page protector. We have um, some space to play at the side with border stickers or the Studio Calico fabrics, all different kinds of things you can add to the edge, and then chipboard and labels and buttons right over the top of the page protector. For the first layout I've used some things from the My Mind's Eye Lost and Found collection as well as uh, Little Yellow Bicycle letter, uh, sorry, border stickers and letter stickers from American Crafts and Sassafras. And then for the second page today, I'm going to use this same page protector. This is what they look like empty. And they come in a pack of 10, by the way. And then I'm going to use the new American Crafts and Chap collection along with the fabrics from Studio Calico. And these, which are the gloopers from Cosmo Cricut, which essentially are like a gigantic glue dot. So we're going to do some things with that. Now, if you don't have the divided page protectors, please don't tune out right now. At the end of the video, I'm going to cover some ideas for how you can do this either with a plain, a plain page protector and make it in divided pockets, or with just a plain standard 12x12 12 12 page and how you can adapt this month's design. So if you'd like to grab 10 4x6 photos and it's 6 landscape and 4 portrait, I'd love for you to scrap along with me. Here's a closer look at the first example page with a yellow, navy blue, and gray color scheme. I've used letter stickers straight onto the border sticker that's off the side of the page protector. And there's thread through the buttons, but it's not actually sewn onto the project. It's just looped through, and then the buttons are held on with glue dots on top of the page protector. And then some journaling bits are underneath the page protector on the photo itself and this one has a transparency frame and a bit of stamping that's right on top of the page protector with stays on ink and similar on the other side washi tape more chipboard more buttons and letter stickers so there's 10 photos all together and I'm going to walk you through the very same project in different colors with different photos so I'm starting with this page protector now these are the 10 by 12 Page, uh, page protectors or photo protectors they call them from American Crafts and the first step is to take your 10 photos four portraits and six landscape and figure out what order you want them to go in. So I'm just going to spread all the photos out so I can see what I have in terms of oh I have one more one more than I need okay um what which ones I'll use and I like the idea of taking two of the group shots and separating them with something that's a bit and um, a bit different than an individual shot so I think I'll do the same on the other side so these will be on this side And that will be the other way. Yep, and we'll use this one first, another project another time. Then I have the portraits. And I think I'll swap those two. So there we go. I'm going to use these five on this side. And with these page protectors, there are separate slots on each side, so I can go ahead and I find it's easiest to go ahead and put all the pictures in even though you are going to be taking some of them out to put some extra embellishment and things like that on them and it's just easier than trying to remember which photo goes where and then I'll turn it over and add the pictures on this side 
So that's the big uh, photo placement job done. Um, very different than working on a paper background, but we'll go ahead and start. And now we're going to add things on top. I'm going to start by utilizing this extra space. This is a 10 by 12 page protector, so I know that when this goes in my album, it's going to be two inches shorter than all the other layouts or all the other 12 by 12 layouts. And we can add things to go over the edge. On the other page I used some fabric border stickers like these but in um, a slightly different color from the same pack. So you can use something with a, a trimmed edge like that. You just want to make sure that it lines up when they're placed back to back. But what I'm going to use is just a straight edge and the fabrics and what um, I want to do is instead of using the pre-cut tears um, to rip the fabric I want to cut one so that it will be even so the two sides will match up. So I'm just going to take what I have left. I've already used a little bit of this. I'm going to take what I have left and crease in the center so I know those two sides are going to match up. And then I just cut a little bit and then this is how fabrics work. They rip and they rip in a nice straight line. So now, just peel off the sticker backing. So it's like fabric with adhesive on the back if you haven't used these before. And just check because not all border stickers are the full 12 inch width, but these will work just fine. And attach that along the edge and then turn it over and match it up with the other side. So that just gives me a different texture or a different style when the page is in my album. It's very tactile because of the, the fabric um, finish to the, this piece. So um, just something a little different in the album and I like adding different things that can mix that up a bit. It also gives me a good place for a title. Um, but then what I'm going to do is start looking at the photos and look for placement the good places to put embellishment. So for example in this picture I'm not going to obscure anything by adding anything to this part of the photo where um, where everything is just concrete because the subject is over here. Um, and I could probably get away with overlapping the photo in this corner because there's not much there and possibly right here in this corner. Um, these two photos really there's not a lot of room to add anything because they the subject takes up most of the picture. And on this side uh, I've got a little window up here as well and possibly something either side of this gentleman but um, I do quite like this photo on its own so I may not add anything there. Perhaps use this little window here or I'm actually not in awe of this corner here that shows all the other people taking pictures at the parade because the other parade shots um, don't actually include that they they're more uh, they, they make it look less like a big tourist attraction or a big media attraction so perhaps I will just cover up these people we'll see how we go with the embellishment so the next thing I'm going to add is my title and um, I'm going to find a place for the journaling for the title lettering, I'm going to use a mix of just plain letter stickers. These are yellow stickers from Sassafras and some glittery thickers. This is the Claire alphabet in um, from Garden Cafe. And I'm going to start by spelling, I'm going to start the title and work backwards because I want it to end at the bottom of the page. So I finished the title on the front and then I just repeated the same technique on the other side and just coming up the page instead of down. And next I'm going to go ahead and find the spots for the journaling. I just wanted to show you what I'm using for the rest of this which is um, the embellishments from 
the Chap line from American Crafts. And I mean, with the name like Chap, it is quite a masculine line. But um, I don't think it's necessarily just for scrapbooking boys because the colors are, um, they're not overtly feminine, certainly, but the, the, it's not like motorbikes and stereotypical mm, uh, skateboards and, and the stuff that's on a lot of the boy lines. So it's mostly um, a bit more general than that. I'm going to start with one of the stickers from this collection and just find it. It's this one um, that's kind of cream with some orangey yellowy accents. And what I want to do is use this here. Now I have a few options. It is possible to just attach it to the photo and put the photo back inside. But I like the idea with these protectors that I could perhaps keep it on top of the page protector and then if I want the photo intact I can still see the full image and I could just take it out or it, it's still there. Um, so instead of putting it on the photo I'm actually going to run it right over the top of the page protector. And then I'll add my journaling and a little bit of embellishment here too. I'm going to use one of these chipboard frames. And I like the color on this one, but it's a bit too big. So perhaps this smaller one instead, and then I can put something a bit more colorful inside the frame. And for that something more colorful, I've used the orange fabrics from Studio Calico and the giant glue dots, the glue burrs from Cosmo Cricut. And I've just ripped a strip and then rolled it around, folded it in on itself and smushed it down. That's a very technical term, but smushed it down to the glue dot and then added a brad in the middle. The brad doesn't go through the page protector. It's just stuck into the glue dot. And then the glue dot is stuck right inside that chipboard frame and it will hold on the outside of the page protector without any problem. I'm almost finished at this point. I've added the date and I just wrote it straight on the transparency and let it dry and then put it back in the page protector. And I've added um, another bit of the uh, fabric in orange with the brown on top. And there wasn't particularly another chipboard frame or sticker that was just the right size. So I went to one of the chat papers and just added a punched shape. And that covers up um, everything that I wanted to cover there and gives me a bit of embellishment on this side. So the photographer man is under there and the transparency frame had these lovely words and swirls but also had a typewriter, which I like typewriters but they don't particularly go with this page. So everything ends up happy there. And then there's just one little last thing I want to do to finish it off, and that's a little bit of stamping right over the top of the page protector along with the washi tape. So what I'm going to do is just tear off little lengths of the tape. And I don't want to end up stamping where there's something attached on the other side. So I'll start over here. I said I had this little window up here so I can add a bit of tape there. This particular tape is the mixed tape from the Amy Tangerine collection, but two piece has loads and loads of different washi tape patterns and colors now. So um, you can find all different kinds and they all work the same way. It's just a really lightweight tape that doesn't, um, it sticks where it, where it's placed, but it doesn't, it's, you can move it about for a little bit um, until you're happy with it. So it works out quite well. And I'll just add a little bit here, I think, underneath there. I need some more adhesive on that part. Okay. And then I'm just going to use a stamp and stays on ink to stamp right on top of the page protector. I'm using this doily stamp from the Amy Tangerine collection again. And I'm just going to stamp. Oh, and I've got that brad in the way. Hold on. Let me do the one on the other side first. So I'm going to stamp right over the tape and the page protector and peel it off. And. And just figure out where I need to. If you have something dimensional like that on your layout, you just have to move the stamp on the block so that the block won't hit the thing that's up off the page. So I just want to stamp right over the join there. 
There we go. And stamping on a page protector, it won't stamp perfectly um, because it will slide a bit and it's hard if you're going over several layers to get it exactly right. If you're a stamper who likes to have it absolutely perfect, then just practice it a few times. Or if um, if you don't mind the, the difference, I quite like how each little piece that it's stamped on creates a different texture. So um, just embrace whichever style works for you. One thing to remember, if you're st using stays on just on the page protector, not on the paper obviously, but um, just on the page protector, if you make a mistake, you can use the stays on remover to just take it off the page protector and um, dry it off and you can start again. So it's a little bit less stressful. You're not going to ruin the project. So um, that's the page completed and I just wanted to talk you through a little bit of um, different things you could do if you didn't have these page protectors in your collection or this isn't something that you wanted to add to your album. You can of course translate this directly to a paper page. Just use the placement and you'd be making a two page layout. Now normally our two page layouts go side by side but perhaps um, look at the, the flow of your album and see if a page protector or sorry not a page protector but a double page layout that was one page um, front and back would perhaps be something useful or you could just extend it and put it side by side so you'd end up with the three landscape and two portrait um, times two so either back to back or side by side and then you'd end up with the, your paper strip down here where it um, extends the extra two inches from the 10 by 12 to the 12 by 12 and you could put your title and your journaling and any embellishment you want there and then add a few little bits over the top if you like the idea of the divided page protectors but you're not so sure on getting a whole pack of 10, why don't you start with a plain page protector and then divide it up. You can um, use a ruler and a dull, something dull like a stylus or um, a blunt pencil and just use a ruler to divide off the spaces and then use a sewing machine to go in and sew the lines for where you want the pockets to be and then carefully go back with a craft knife and cut any openings that um, will be needed for your photos. So you can customize this. I don't want you to think that you can't participate this month if you don't have this page protector. That's not the case at all. But in case you haven't given them a try, I really wanted to introduce you to this idea. They also do divided page protectors that are in the store that are all landscape or all portrait with six on a 12 by 12. So just a few different things that you could um, uh, you could take for the run. number of photos that you're scrapping this month this is probably the quickest layout that we've done so I hope that you will join me this month and upload your project to two peas in a bucket and I'll see you on the 30th of November with 11 photos on our layout